justiciera? Nunca lo he entendido. ¿Por qué has ayudado a todo el mundo? Excepto a mí. So many things. I think I think she people kind of um, what I find fascinating about her is that she's completely unlikable, really. She's she's not the classic protagonist. There's nothing which means that she's soft and warm and cuddly and and uh, and uh, something that people kind of idolise in any way. But yet people love her. They love her very deeply. And so to me that must mean that there's something in her which is what people identify with or that they, they wish they were more like. Or uh, and, and those things I think are what's fascinating about her is that she, from the outside she seems so uh, not fit for kind of public consumption but that people can't get enough of her. I think that th that happens by virtue of the fact that in this film that she's the centre of the drama, that she's not the kind of viewed from the outside as much as she normally is. Normally she's kind of the fascination of Mikhail Blumvisk and his inspiration. And people kind of look at her from the outside and go, wow, isn't she strange? Um, whereas in this one, her irregularity and her idiosyncrasies are what the audience are allowed to digest. You're allowed to watch her in her home alone and see her in her own environment and see her having personal interactions that you never really got a chance to see before. She was always seen from behind glass, really. Um, and so I think it, you know, that makes her more human because you live with her more. I didn't actively try and make her more human. I think that was a real element of her character anyway, but, um, but I think you just see more of her, really. It was a very gradual process because I was really adamant that it had to be, everything had to make sense and that everything had to have a reason. So. Um, it was tough because, you know, it was a very, very slow, slow, slow progress. So then when I actually was on the first day kind of with all the hair and makeup, um, that made more sense to me than me being at home with the undercut on my own. Uh, it made much more sense being at work than it did living, walking around, uh, being myself. So um, it felt right and I was quite pleased by that because it was quite a long process and, and quite difficult to to, to get to that point, but, but it, it felt correct to me. Um, no, uh, I've seen Atomic Blonde, I thought it was great. Um, no, I, I found that the reason why most people will come to this movie is because of Elizabeth, it's because of her and because of her essence. And uh, uh, I think sometimes there can be like a, uh, tendency to make uh, a female-led spy drama kind of like that make it titillating and make it sort of exciting so that there's, you want to attract a male audience to it in a way and I just feel like with Elizabeth that would undermine why people love her so um, so no but I do think that it adds an interesting side to the story is that Elizabeth is trying to solve and she's trying to understand and she's sort of on the run and she's she seeing that character in those circumstances kind of what is interesting her her individual approach to things I think is what's interesting. I mean, there's so much in Elizabeth to, to still find out and know. And I, as an actress, I think the other actresses who played her will attest to the fact that you'll never get to the bottom of the character. You'll never be able to truly get to the point where you feel like you've done her justice or that you've understood every element of her character. So, um, so there's definitely more to, to, to learn and find out about Elizabeth. But you know, I'm just doing this one at the moment. <laughs> Lisbeth, ¿por qué las arañas no se quedan atrapadas en sus telarañas?